Welcome back to Jay's grand tour of content in Das Studio and how it all works. I wanted to talk to you about these custom libraries I've installed in my version of Das Studio and how that can be helpful, why I've done that and why I encourage you to work yourself with custom libraries, both for installing content as well as saving your own content. When we talk more about the Genesis figure, you may have heard crazy stories of people who have to wait 10, 20 minutes, maybe even an hour to load their base Genesis character into Das Studio. And that is happening because figures have these custom morph dials installed. And every morph slider that is made available inside Das Studio, which we'll talk about later, and how to use them and how to adjust them and all that, every of these morph sliders is essentially a file on the hard drive that needs to be loaded in. And the more of those you have installed, the more needs to be loaded in when the figure is loaded in. And some people have literally hundreds and hundreds of custom figures installed, as well as other morph products that all add sliders to the Genesis figure. And the more of those you have, the more of those that Studio needs to load. So what I'm trying to say is the more is installed, the more that Studio has to deal with. So there is a way if you split this up that you can map and unmap these content directories if you needed them and then essentially just, you know, group your products together 10 or 20 at a time and then not map into Das Studio what you don't want to be available while you're working with the scene. And that's where these custom libraries come in. And if that sounds a little bit cryptic, let's have a look at a more concrete example here. So if I go, I'm just going to leave my guy jumping for joy in here. I'll go to my content library tab and I will direct your attention to these things at the top. I'm going to close down my Das 3D library and I will show you that I have characters as well as outfits, as well as 3DSK scenes. That's kind of a project I'm working on, as well as Vivian pumps. That's another project I'm working on. So these, these are all just folders anywhere on my hard drive, external drive, second drive, you know, network drive, whatever works for you. These are just folders, really. And I can tell Das Studio about their existence in various ways. So I can go here to Das Studio Formats and right click on it and say, add a base directory. I can also go and remove one, say if I don't want it to work with the Vivian pumps anymore, if it's like one project that's in one folder, it's fairly small, but it's contained in there. So that's kind of the beauty of working with one project in one folder. If you have one scene, make it one folder. If you have one scene with 12 renders, put it all into one separate folder. If you have a larger project that has several chapters, I encourage you to put each chapter into one folder. You can even put that into another folder, make it subfolders of that. It's all possible. So like this here, I can also go and right click on that and remove this base directory to tidy that up when I'm done with this. Let's start this perhaps from scratch. How do we get this into here? So you can either right click and say add, or you can also go to this little hamburger icon up here and then say content directory manager. And that will open up another window here that almost kind of mimics what we see here. It has the DAS Studio formats here. And then we see the actual directory of where I've saved all these things. We have another one here just on this note here for poser formats. So DAS Studio is fully backwards compatible with all the poser content and it can still read that. So if you have another library that has poser content, you can map that here. You can also map the same library if you know it contains both DAS as well as poser content. But with these days, we're not really focused on poser backward compatibility anymore. So I'm going to go and close this down and just focus on the DAS Studio formats here. So you can map a directory here as well with the add button. And if you select another one here, you can also go and remove it or edit it. Whichever way works for you. I'm going to use the one that's kind of in the smart content tab. I'll hit cancel and maybe go over to my desktop and just create myself a brand new folder for maybe a new project that I'm working on. So right click anywhere you need one and say I have a new folder. I'm going to call it new project. How's that? And typically this isn't on the desktop. You probably want to put that either on a second hard drive or you want to put that into something like a Dropbox folder or whatnot. And once we're back in Das Studio, I can just go and right click that and say add a base directory here. Move to my desktop, find it here and it's called new project. It's empty at the moment and it's fine. I'll go save it. Then this whole menu kind of closes up and that's Das's way of saying I've just refreshed it. So there we go. Here's my new project folder now. And in it, I can save stuff. And that's going to be nice. If I go and save my own scenes in it, that's good. I can also go and install 
my own content into it. I can tell Install Manager or Dash Central, hey, use this for content. And when I want to install a new product, you can go and direct it to that folder and then it will go and end up in there. Smart content or content library don't really care if you have multiple libraries. It will just look for whatever fits with what in any of these libraries. So that's kind of nice. If you had, say, an outfit in library A and then you had a texture set from a different product in library B, it doesn't matter. That studio will find it and it'll be able to figure out where to pull that from. It's kind of it's clever under the hood. On this note, if I wanted to install content into this now, here's how I would do that in Install Manager. I just go and open it up, quickly log in, head over to this little settings icon here and head over to advanced settings. In it, I have a tab called installation. And in it, at the bottom, I have several paths that I can use for installing things. If I wanted to go and add my new project to it, I give it a label and I'll say, I don't know, new project is good. I can also call it something else, maybe demo project or whatnot. I give it the path in here and that's going to be on the desktop. My new project, there it is. Select folder, hit accept and hit accept on this window as well and then it knows about it. So if I wanted to go and install any of these products, a new hair product by Out of Touch, for example, the 2021 13 hair with the hat, that's great. I'm looking forward to trying that out. I can go and tick this now, and at the bottom here, where it says Content Path Shortcuts, I can now go and pick my installation folder from here. So anything that's mapped here, I can pick from down here and then go and install my hair into my new project, for example, and then hit start queue. And then that studio is going to find that as soon as the installation has stopped. So imagine I had done that with a lot of content that I'm intending to use for one project. I keep working on that and then I'm done with the project and I'm moving on to something else. I can then go and leave the content installed, but then I can go and unmap this folder from Das Studio. And by doing so, Das Studio will no longer see that content. Therefore, it doesn't have to load anything that might increase your loading times on your system. So you can still have a lot of content installed on your system, but you tell Das Studio not to load it in every time anymore because you're done with it. So the install manager makes it really easy to uninstall content as well. But if you want to leave it installed and just unmap it for the time being, you just go and right click on your project and say remove base directory. And and Das Studio doesn't mind about this. It just goes and says, okay, fine, that content directory is no longer available. So any content that is referenced in that will generate an error message. But also the good thing is figure loading times are going to be sped up by that. So many of us spread our content around multiple libraries, either by project or by topic, something like, you know, I've started doing this with characters here. These are where custom characters go. This is where outfits go. And then I have it on a per project basis. And that's a really nice workflow that, that works for me and many other people. Let me go and bring this back at base directory. You just get a bit of um, practice here. On the desktop, there is the new project. And currently we don't have anything installed here, but Das Studio now knows about it. And I can go ahead and save scenes in that. That is the next thing we're going to have a look at. If we were really attached to a man that is now jumping for joy, how do we save him? And what are our options of saving this as a scene as well as other types of formats so that we can reuse this with our other scenes? Stay tuned for that.